In this video we will demonstrate how to use Song Surgeon to create a customized practice lesson that costs you nothing. It's absolutely free. And the first thing we're, we need to do is to open the sniffer window and go to the internet and find an audio file that we can use. And in this particular example we're going to use YouTube where we can strip an audio from the video. I've done a search on YouTube. I found something I'm interested in and as soon as I start it playing uh, you'll see that we detect a link in the sniffer window and uh, once it's there then all we need to do is click the button to download and play and give it a file name and we go ahead and save that and we're all done. Step two in the process of creating this custom lesson is to then identify the part or the segment of the song that you're interested in. And of course you're going to be listening to it and as you do you might want to set markers at the top as you can see me doing here to help you remember where certain sections are and you're going to want to zoom and by zooming in on the waveform file you can more clearly see where one particular part begins and another one ends and you can better delineate the segment or the section of the song that you're interested in. So once you think you've done that, and I'm going to make this easy, we're going to keep the front part of this song. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and select an area right now uh, by dragging my mouse, and then we're going to cut this or delete it. And what we have left then is a piece of the song or a segment that we're going to be using to create our custom lesson. The next step then really is to open a second instance of Song Surgeon and once we've done this we're going to go ahead and, and minimize this particular um, instance and we're going to go to the second instance which I have open and we're going to grab a piece of it which is a click track and we're going to highlight this and then do a control C to copy it and once we've copied it we're going to back we're going to go back to the other instance and once we're there we're going to insert our cursor at the point that we'd like to paste this click track into this file and we go ahead and click control V and we paste that um, click track in front of it and now we have essentially the building blocks to create our lesson Step three in the process then is to clean this file up a little bit and then to go ahead and clone it. And I'm going to zoom in here and it looks to me like I've got a little bit of extra space between the click track and the start of this segment that I had selected. So we're going to go ahead and clean it up by deleting that extra space. I've highlighted it and now we're going to go ahead and uh, just uh, hit the delete key and it's gone and now we're going to drag this file and we're going to go to the end of it and also here it appears to me that we've got some extra uh, space at the end of it that we really don't need so we're going to go ahead again to highlight it and delete it and now that we have what we want on the screen I'm going to zoom back out so I can see the whole thing and now we're going to go ahead and clone it and to do that we essentially uh, select the whole file or the whole waveform area I should say copy it and we can do a control C to copy it and then we're going to go ahead and uh, paste it in by using the edit command and we've done that once so now you can see we have two instances we're going to set our cursor again where we want the insertion point and paste it back in a third time and now that we've done that we've got three separate pieces of the same song on the screen and that sets us up for our next step and that next step is the setting of three individual loop areas one for each of these pieces that we've cloned and we do that by simply left clicking and right clicking with our mouse and when we do that it'll highlight a particular area as you can see here so we've created one I've set the beginning loop point on number two. We go ahead and right click over here. We've got the second loop area set. Now we're going to go ahead and do the third area. And then we'll have all three of these areas set up uh, as loop areas. And you're going to see the reason for that because essentially what will happen is once we select a loop area, uh, and I'm going to zoom back out here so we can see all of them on the screen, but I put my cursor in this first area and it allows me then to slow down just that area and I'm going to slow it down to 50 percent Then I'm going to go to the second area and slow it down to 75 percent and then we're going to go to the third loop area and we're going to slow it down to 90 percent um, and once I've done that then I have three separate loop areas each that plays at a different speed 
and that's fairly useful but the next thing we're going to do even customizes it more and that is that I can open this little dialog window to edit each loop area and I can change the number of times a particular segment loops and I can also put a delay at the end of it for instance if I want to put a five second delay and then I can save that for that loop area and I can do the same with loop area 2 and of course once we've done that with loop area 2 then we'll move on and do it with loop area 3 as well and when we're done we have now created three separate loop areas each with individual settings and each that allows us to play that loop area back at different speeds with different settings to really customize each of these loop areas separately the last step in the process of creating a customized lesson is to be able to save it so you can use it in the future and we've got a couple of options here the first is to save it as a song surgeon project or an SSP file here we're giving it a name and we're saving it and when we do that essentially what happens is it will reproduce exactly what you see on the screen the loop points um, the settings for each loop point even these internal settings where you can set, set the number of uh, loops and the delays so all of these things including the labels at the top here will be stored and saved and the second method of saving that we have is to actually export the file and we choose the export command and it opens a dialog window here we assign it a name we select a file type and then we go about the process of exporting it and uh, as it's exporting down here let me just tell you briefly that there's a significant difference between an export command and a song surgeon project file the project file actually doesn't make these changes permanent it simply reopens the file and applies all of these settings to that same unchanged file whereas an export command actually makes these changes permanent that means you can take them with you and they become portable you can put them on your iPod uh, burn them to a CD uh, put them on an mp3 player and those changes will forever after play in the way that they're displayed on the screen with the changes in tempo as well as the cut and paste in the creation of these new files so it really is uh, a great benefit to have and something that a lot of people really like so that's going to conclude this video thanks for your time